Hello there and welcome back to The Closet Historian and back to my sewing room for a bit of a tutorial today. I've been promising for ages that I would go over how I set in my zippers in a little bit more detail and show the full process of both how I do my machine sewn zippers and then also how I have been doing them by hand more recently. Um, I don't always get every step of this on camera just because I'm focusing. When I'm putting a zipper into a garment, I'm trying to not mess it up because I am still a little bit afraid of the zippers and I, I think I will always remain a little bit afraid of zippers um, until I figure out out there somewhere, there's a couturier who knows how to do it lickety split and I want to take a class with them. But until that happens, this is as good as uh, as it gets. I'm not saying this is the right way to do a lap zipper. I'm not even saying this is the best way to do a lap zipper today. I'm just going to show you how I do them without getting frustrated and angry and keeping everything functional and mostly nice in the end. But let's go ahead and jump on over to my ironing board and get started. All right, I have two pieces of muslin here that are gonna stand in for our center back of, let's say, I don't know, a pencil skirt. So. Uh, we have our center back seam here. You can also put a zipper in in the side of a skirt or a dress. Uh, you can put a zipper in anywhere. And actually the process doesn't change whether or not you have a center back seam or the side, even though the side zipper is often curved, it's the same exact process and it works relatively well whether the seam is straight or not, weirdly enough. But I'm gonna line up my center back here of my imaginary pencil skirt for the day. Imagine I'm making a very short muslin mini skirt and I have this bright yellow zipper that I, let's face it, wasn't gonna use for anything else to practice with today. Now on my patterns, I usually leave myself a one inch seam allowance down the center back. And so I'm just going to mark that on the lower half of this. If you can't really see, I'm using my color pencil quite lightly just so that I don't get lost about what I need to do. I'm gonna mark about a half inch up from the end of my zipper here, holding it in place where it needs to go eventually. So about a half inch from the little metal stopper on that, I'm gonna start pinning the back seam down because I will sew the center back seam of my imaginary skirt here first. So I'll just sew from where the Zipper will end to the hem. Um, if I'm doing a fuller skirt, also all the way to the hem. If I'm doing a pencil skirt, often I will leave the last um, like six to eight inches of the skirt open and free for a slit, of course, but same sort of idea. Close the back seam of my dress or my skirt, or if I'm doing a zipper in the side seam of my trousers, which is also where I'd put zippers, but that's where the, the main place is where I use them. But I'll just stitch that with a 12 stitches per inch, my normal stitch length over there on the machine, starting with back stitch, ending with back stitch like so. And then I will press that seam open and use that as a guide to press the rest of the open area where the zipper will go open as well. So you can use a hem gauge for this to make sure you're getting that to be one inch or whatever your seam allowance is. Usually I just eyeball it on a skirt, but on a dress I will definitely use the hem gauge. But now I have this smooth open area where this zipper needs to go. Um, so I'm going to lay my zipper underneath the right hand side of this and I'm going to pin this right next to the zipper teeth in place. So I'm going to make sure this is tucked under there like so under the end of the seam and then I'm just going to pin this with pins parallel to the zipper teeth and pin this right next like the folded edge basically goes right next to the zipper teeth and obviously this is muslin cotton muslin it's super easy to work with and use um, it's used for mock-ups mostly and for designing but uh, you know if, when using a lurex brocade like I often do this is more of a harrowing process or using something floopy you know uh, depends on the fabric how annoying this is going to be which is why I don't always film the process like I said now I'm switching over to my zipper foot over here on the Singer 99K from 1955. Of course, your machine and zipper foot may vary, but I do quite like this one. Um, and this all model parts over here on the 99K. So I'm gonna line this buddy up so that I can stitch really close to where I just pinned that folded edge next to my zipper teeth. And I'm just gonna try and stitch, you know, uh, even less than an eighth of an inch. Uh, you don't wanna stitch right on top of where the zipper teeth begin because then you'll catch little nylon fibers and you won't be able to zip the zipper up and down. So you do need to stitch next to the edge as close as you can, but not over the edge. Um, so better to have a little bit of too much space than not enough because the zipper will get stuck in those stitches if you do. And usually I leave the needle down, move the zipper out of the way to get this last little bit near the top. And I am of course using contrast thread here so you can see everything for this tutorial. But at the end of the video, I will show you what this looks like with matching colors of thread because it's gonna look a little bit messier here than it should because obviously using, I think it's dark green and purple thread on ivory fabric is not gonna yield the best results. Now I'm going to overlap the other side of my zipper here. This is where I have that other folded edge from pressing my seam allowance open. I'm just gonna overlap that over the zipper teeth about a tiny, tiny bit, like less than eighth of an inch. It overlaps just enough to cover the zipper and the stitching on the other side. I have had questions about lapped zippers um, which is what I always use overlapped zippers like this, as opposed to centered or railroaded zippers, which some people prefer, just happen to like an overlapped zipper personally. Um, whether or not the amount of overlap means that there's like a change in the fit or if I need to add more ease in the pattern for that, 
And the answer is no. We're overlapping a tiny, tiny bit. If you overlap too much, you'll get a pucker at the end of the zipper anyway. We're just overlapping ugh, the tiniest bit, um, just like so. Um, like basically lining up that folded edge with the stitching line that we just put in. Um, and again, in matching thread, you won't be able to see these things nearly as much. Here on my zipper foot, I'm going to switch to the other side. This zipper foot just facilitates me getting the needle as close to the zipper as possible. So I'm gonna line up with the zipper foot riding alongside the zipper teeth underneath the fabric. So I can feel where that zipper teeth, where they are underneath. And I'm gonna ride the zipper foot along that edge and just pull my pins out as I go because I do like to have them parallel these days. I used to put them perpendicular, it still works, but I like to have them parallel now. Just keep them out of my way. Again, I'm just stitching with 12 stitches per inch over here, a uh, medium to small stitch length. And again, when I get to the end, I will leave my needle down in the project pick up the presser foot and move the zipper pull out of the way, put the presser foot back down and sew to the top. Like so. All right, so now my zipper is in, uh, alas. So is it perfect? Is it the best? Like I said, no, this is just what works for me uh, to avoid frustration, to get the zipper in and functional, you know, the best I can without driving myself mad. Uh, I've tried other ways of putting zippers in. You may have a way that you prefer. You may have a way that you think is a lot nicer. Good. Uh, if it works for you, do it. This is just what works for me. Now, again, I will show you how I've been doing this lately with a hand backstitch on the other side. So um, here's another uh, imaginary skirt here in muslin. And again, I've just stitched from where the zipper ends down the rest of the back seam and pressed that open. The same set of steps for the beginning of this. So again, I will pin the right hand side of this, the folded edge, right next to my zipper teeth. And I will again take this over to the machine and sew it down the same way I did for that first way of doing this, I guess. Uh, version one here was all machine sewn. This is going to be half machine sewn and half hand finished. So back here on the machine, again, I'm just going to stitch right close to that folded edge along the zipper teeth, stitching that folded edge down to the zipper tape underneath basically. And you can put interfacing along this folded edge, edge on the inside if your fabric isn't very stable. Um, if I were making like a muslin garment, unlikely, I would put like an inch or an inch and a half of interfacing along this folded edge before I did that pressing work, just to give it a little bit more stability. But my use of interfacing is very dependent on the textile and my, uh, you know, faith in it to hold its shape and stability with or without interfacing. So most of the time I use quite closely woven fabrics like cotton sateen or cotton twill, and I'm not too worried about them stretching out. So I don't even bother most of the time. But now instead of taking this over to the machine, now that I have this overlapped again and pinned into place, I'm going to grab some double thread on a needle and I will hand stitch this with a sort of pricked back stitch um, to stitch this in place. And mostly I started doing my zippers this way uh, when I've been working with like more delicate brocades and like the weird Lorex sparkly fabrics that I use because they do get caught, like the needle, no matter how many times I switch to a fresh Microtex sharp needle over the machine, it still gets caught on the Lurex threads. And at least if I catch it while I'm doing hand sewing, I can like catch myself before I get any pulls. So I've been doing this hand set zipper in my brocade garments more and more recently. And this again is using a contrast thread. So you're gonna be able to see my tiny little stitches here, but definitely in a textured fabric, they disappear really quickly if you're using a matching thread. So you really can't see this, uh, but I just hold the garment in my lap basically like so. If you imagine that I have to go in and out of a skirt instead of in and out of this open piece of muslin, it's a little bit more uh, finicky, but obviously this is a little bit easier than it would be normally. So we're working under ideal conditions here, as opposed to the ones I normally have to work under, which is a scratchy brocade that is fighting me every step of the way. But I will usually sit in front of my computer to do this and I'll like put on a podcast or something to watch in the background, some old Adam's Family reruns and or QI reruns normally, if we're honest, or maybe a science podcast, because for a dress, this can take a good 15, 20 minutes. Um, but for a little skirt like this, would only take like 10, if that, five or 10. So um, it doesn't take too, too long. It's not, I, for some reason I had it in my head that it would take hours to do this and it really doesn't. So um, I think it's worth doing on finicky fabrics or if you just are looking for a more hand-sewn couture-like finish or are afraid of this side of the zipper, it's always possible to do it by hand, but I'm coming up from underneath and taking a little stitch in the backwards direction. So I'm coming about a quarter of an inch forward, uh, going back about an eighth of an inch, if that. Um, just tiny stitches. Of course, you're gonna try and space these evenly. Try and make your stitch the same size. You can make them closer if you want. I find that a quarter of an inch away like this holds perfectly fine. I'm using doubled thread here. Um, it usually 
holds like there's no I've never had any snap on me or uh, too much strain under the, zipper, under the zipper. Of course, if you're making something that's a really tight garment, you might want to like, I don't know, baste it like this and then go over it with the machine. And that's always an option too, is basting your zippers into place before you do the machine sewing on them if you want to feel a little bit more confident over on the machine. But I haven't had one of these come apart on me yet. It's actually stronger than you would think um, just because the weight and the pull of the fabric on your body is being distributed like against all of these stitches as opposed to just, you know, on one. So it, uh, Works pretty well, honestly. But when I get to the end here, I will just do a, a couple of extra stitches, bring my thread to the inside, and then just tie this off and kind of hide the thread underneath the zipper tape. Especially if I'm doing like a hand set zipper like this, I'm probably working in a brocade garment. I'm probably lining it. Um, so all this is gonna get covered when I hand stitch the lining down anyhow. So I'm not usually too worried about that kind of thing, especially because the only person who ever sees the inside of my garments is me. And well, I guess all, all of you. But um, no one sees them up close in person, that's for sure, other than me. And so here's my finished hand uh, sort of backstitched zipper. I've gotten it's machine sewn and then hand stitched to finish it, basically. Um, and I'm just lamenting how thick the zipper pulls are on these things because everything would lay so much nicer and smoother if the zipper pulls were flat. And a lot of times on vintage zippers, they're flatter and smoother. And also on metal zippers, they fold kind of nicer. So zipper pulls on modern zippers, not my favorite but one doesn't always have a metal zipper to match everything. So let's go ahead and do that first method I showed you all machine sewn again, but using the color of thread that would be appropriate for our fake muslin miniskirt and uh, a color of zipper again that matches as well. So you can see how invisible this can look compared to when I was using contrast threads. So again, I've sewn my center back seam and press that open. I'm just going to use my hem gauge here to make sure that my eyeballing of that worked out to be an inch like so, keep everything nice and pressed and smooth, ready to go. You could also put, you know, hooks and eyes along this or other ways of closing something if you wanted to. Um, Velcro, I don't know, depends on like what the needs for the garment are. Sometimes in theater they used Velcro, I know, because you have to do quick changes. So no one has time for a zipper and especially a zipper to get stuck. So it makes sense when you think about it. But again, I will pin my pressed edge right along the zipper teeth. Although this time it is a zipper that matches the garment. So that's nice. And again, back here on the machine, I'm using this first side of the zipper foot to stitch right next to the zipper teeth. Again, you can kind of, well, at least with this zipper foot, you ride along the edge of the zipper teeth with the metal of the side of the zipper foot. So it's quite useful. I really, I hated zippers a bunch more before I got this machine. Uh, working on the vintage machine with this vintage foot, I find much easier for putting zippers in. In general, I might even try other methods sometime, but really... Uh, again, I am not too particular about making my zippers perfect because who the heck is studying my zipper that closely? I don't know. Like, I want it to be nice, but absolute perfection is never what I'm really after. Um, I do want to improve my sewing and get better at putting zippers in, and practice like this is helpful, so thanks, I guess. But um, not to the point where I'm, like, holding up my projects because I can't make them perfect. You know, perfection is the enemy of done, as they always say. But here I've just overlapped that other side again, pinned it into place. I've got my pins perpendicular this time just to show you that that works just as well and i'll just switch to the other side of this zipper foot again here back here on the machine and start again at the bottom and i like to figure out where everything is line this up again with the zipper teeth underneath the fabric and just start stitching again i backstitch here and then uh, start sewing basically the same as i would sew any seam just i'm sewing this top you know fold down to the zipper tape underneath like so it's like, you know, the ironing is what finishes this. It's just putting the zipper in makes it open and close. Uh, so it's already done in some ways. The zipper is just facilitating the on-off of it all. And now, of course, with matching ivory natural colored thread and ivory zipper, this is a lot more seamless and pretty on the outside than the first version I showed you where I had contrast everything so you could see what was going on. But now you can hardly see any of the nonsense. So I don't Again, it works for me. Again, there are about a thousand different ways to set in a zipper and a million tutorials here online or over on Pinterest and things like that. So there are many methods to try if this doesn't work for you or doesn't look polished enough for your taste. Um, there are definitely different ways to do this. I used to do these the way that Tasha of Tasha could make that. So I will link her channel below so you can see how she does zippers because that's how I used to do them all the time. I think I learned originally to do lap zippers from her. So I will link you over to her channel because she's an excellent seamstress. Um, I just have been working with fabrics that don't tolerate that method very well um, in the last couple of years. So I've switched over to doing it this way instead. But hopefully this is helpful for some of you. Again, this isn't the best way. 
It's just the way that I do it. So that is how I set in zippers. Lapped zippers is what I use most often, whether in the center back, the side, a skirt, a dress, whatever, what have you. This is how I've been putting in zippers lately. Again, I have been using that hand stitched, kind of prick stitched method more and more often just because I feel like it gives me more control and it actually doesn't take too, too long. I think I, you know, usually put them in my machine because it doesn't take much time, but honestly, the amount of nerves having that kind of almost finished project under a machine gives me, it's just easier to sew them by hand. So I've been doing it more and more lately. But thank you as always for watching today and I'll be back with more sewing, vintage fashion, costuming, and crafting real soon. So I'll see you then. Bye.